So we are going to get started with the first form with either a divorce or a legal separation. It is FL100, it's called petition. And you should all have that in your packet somewhere. Contemplating when they're going downstairs and asking for that form. I think I have an extra packet. You can no, 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 I got this form. I'm talking about what you're talking about. Summons, what is it called? Summary dissolution. Is everyone on the petition? So we start off at the top. We have what's called a caption. You will see that at the top left-hand corner of every document that you prepare. Your name, if you're self-represented, needs to go up at the top, along with a mailing address. In divorce, it's very common for you to move, to change addresses, so you want to make sure to use an address that you think is going to stick around for the duration of your course. Same thing with a phone number. The clerks rarely call you, but if they do, they need to be able to get in touch with you. It does not have to be your home number, it does not have to be your cell number, but it has to be a number that they can reach you at. Contra Costa does not email yet, so your email address is optional and you should know it should never be used. Because you are self-represented, attorney for would be pro per, P-R-O space P-E-R. That means you're self-represented. If you have purchased the forms packet from Contra Costa County, you'll want to fill in the address. It's already filled in for you, but it's 751 Pine Street, PO Box 911, and that's in Martinez, zip code 94553. And that is how you are going to start every single document that you do with the exception of the summons. As I said before, Petition and respondent are nothing more than titles, so you will want to just list your name and the other side's name. You are the petitioner if you are the first one initiating the divorce, and the other side will be the respondent. Now we get down to the next box, which is petition for, and then you have three options. Dissolution of marriage, which means divorce, legal separation, and nullity of marriage. A nullity of marriage means an annulment. There are several differences between a dissolution of marriage or a divorce and a legal separation. The reason some people opt for a legal separation is because you are still legally married at the end of it. Think of it as parallel paths, but they have two end destinations. A divorce is going to restore you to the status of a single individual. A legal separation, you're still married. You're just permanently separated. It is still a statement that your marriage is over. One of the big reasons people choose a legal separation would be that because you're still married, you can still share the other's medical benefits. So for example, if you or the other party is not insurable because of a health a condition, then you can opt to do a legal separation and remain on the other's health care benefits. Other reasons people choose a legal separation over a divorce would be primarily because of religious or moral reasons. Occasionally, people stay legally separated if they're in the military because in the military they only recognize you as married or divorced, so people who are legally separated can still enjoy the same benefits as a military spouse. Any questions on the difference between a divorce and a legal separation? If you're legally separated from somebody, can you remarry that one? No, you cannot because legal separation stops you there. You're not a single person again. You do file your taxes separately. Uh, your credits do separate because it's a legal separation. However, if you want to remarry, you need to file a separate case for a divorce at that point in time. Another difference between a dissolution of marriage and a legal separation is the time limit. California has a minimum six month and one day waiting period from the date of service for a divorce to be finalized. There is no such waiting period for a legal separation. Any other questions between the difference? of a divorce and a legal separation. All right. You are going to see a case number on the right-hand side of your form. That number is going to remain blank. You will not be assigned a case number until you actually file the documents with the court. In Contra Costa, your case number will always start with D, followed by the calendar year. So we are just on the end of 2011. So in this case, it would be D11 dash whatever number you are for the year. Starting next year, you'll be D12-00001. All right, we're gonna go on to number one with regards to residence. You can see there, it only applies to divorces only. Why is that? In California, you must be a resident of California to file for divorce. That means 
six months living in California, and three months in your county of filing. If you want a legal separation, you don't need any sort of waiting period. You can file, whether or not you're a resident of California. Number two, we have statistical facts. We have your date of marriage. That one's self-explanatory. Can I ask you about it, number one? Yes. Um, so uh, do you mark both a petitioner and resident if both of you are in California? If both of you are residents of California and of Contra Costa, you can check both boxes. It's Again, not of Contra Costa. You both need to be, re only one of you needs to be a resident of Contra Costa County. So you want to check the applicable box. All right, number two, date of marriage, date of separation. That is two-pronged. One is it's an actual statement, so there is a real separation in your mind. It's a subjective decision that you intend to have a divorce or a legal separation. The legal impact behind your date of separation is that is the date that everything separates, meaning your income is now your separate property. Your debts are now your separate property. So for example, if your year-end bonus is for the month of December, and the month of December only, and you've separated in November, that bonus is yours and yours alone. If, however, your date of separation is the following January and you've earned your bonus for the month of December, that's community, meaning it's presumed to be 50-50, half yours and half your spouse's. Same thing with debts. So while the date of separation is very important from an emotional standpoint, it's also equally important from a legal standpoint. Number three is your declaration regarding minor children. Either there are minor children or there aren't minor children. When we're talking about minor children, we're talking about minor children of your marriage. We're not talking about stepchildren. We're not talking about children from your, your previous relationship. We are talking about children born or adopted by you during your marriage. So both of you are the parents. You'll want to list the name, birth date, age, and sex of all of your minor children of the relationship. If you had minor children prior to your marriage, let's say your child was born January 1st, 2010, and you got married May 1st, 2010. However, it's a child that dad is dad and mom is mom, so husband and wife had a child prior to marriage. You'll want to check box D here to establish the child's paternity. In California, the presumption of being married means that your children born during the marriage are presumptively yours. If they're born prior to marriage, there is no such presumption as to who the father is. Number four, we're going to list all of your separate property. That is all items acquired before marriage and after your separation, and those items acquired by gift or inheritance. If you have a short-term marriage, let's say under five years, many of your belongings will be your separate property. You bought a car before you were married. You had your retirement plan before you were married. You bought a house before you were married. All of these things would be considered your separate property items. Important things to know, inheritances are separate property whether they were acquired during your marriage or before your marriage. You'll see here there's a space to confirm to either petitioner or respondent depending on who belongs to what. Any questions on the first page of the petition? If you don't have any separate property, you can put to be determined or you can put none. We have no argument about what's reasonable and what's not. That's not